grade sevens, natural sciences. I'm Helen, and we've been learning such a lot about energy transfers over the last few lessons and energy transfers within systems. So today I want to test your knowledge. How much do you remember about all that we've learned about energy transfers? So let's get on to some revision. Let's revise what we have learned about energy transfers. So what I want you to do is look at this diagram here and make up a flow diagram to illustrate the energy transfers in the system. So I've done the first one for you and you're going to have to think very quickly and do the rest of the examples in today's lesson. We know that the boy has potential energy. And remember that that is um, chemical potential energy and it's derived from the food that he ate. That potential energy works within him. So it works within the energy store to allow him to grow, to do all sorts of things that young boys do. But in this particular diagram, we're seeing that that energy is being transferred to kinetic energy in his arms. And he has two arms and they're doing two different things. The kinetic energy is being transferred from his arm to the ball. And the ball is going to fly up into the air and rise into the air. The potential energy in the ball and in when that ball is at the top of its arc and the energy that is in the racket are going to be transferred into kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is going to be transferred to the ball when the racket hits it. And what do we call this system? What kind of system is it? It's a system that is relying on forces that are going to bring about those transfers of energy. And where we've got forces, we know that it is a mechanical system. Now, in this system, are there examples of wasted or dissipated energy. So energy that is going to escape from the system into the environment, that when we look at the energy that we start with and the energy that we finish with, they're not equal and they should be equal because of the law of conservation of energy. So somewhere along the line, some energy is going to be released out of the system. And remember, yes, there is wasted energy or dissipated energy, because as you play your game of tennis, you get hot, All right? As that racket hits the ball, there is also a certain amount of heat energy that is transferred. So we see that Whilst our system works with energy transfers, there is going to be some wasted energy in the form of heat. I want you now to see if you can construct this energy transfer diagram all by yourself. So this time, the energy diagram is working in that direction, right? Simply because that's how the pictures are given to you in that order. So let's see, can you shout out for me each of these stages in this system? Can you identify what kind of system it is? And can you tell me if there's any dissipated or wasted energy in the system? So what we have in the picture is a tree and it's an apple tree that produces apples. We have a little caterpillar inside one of our apples eating it. We know that the bird is going to eat the apple and then very sadly along comes clever cat and the clever cat is going to eat the bird. So we've got a transfer of energies between and within biological 
organisms, living organisms. And so therefore, this is what we call a biological system. I hope you managed to get that right. Let's start. Where is the source of energy for the tree? Where does the energy come from to allow the tree to grow, to allow the tree to produce its apples? Remember, we have solar energy or energy from the sun. And that energy is transferred to the tree. What is the form of energy that the tree uses to store its energy that this little caterpillar is going to exploit or use? Remember that the chemical store of energy is our potential energy inside the apple, which is made by the tree. The caterpillar comes along and eats the apple. So that chemical potential energy is transferred to the caterpillar. In the same way, the caterpillar is going to do all of its life processes and energy transfers will happen within the caterpillar. But ultimately, the bird is going to come along and it's going to see the apple or it's going to see the caterpillar and it's going to eat them. And that energy is going to be transferred to the bird. We know that the bird is going to use some of that potential energy to enable it to fly, to enable it to build its nests. But some of that energy is going to be transferred to the cat when the cat eats the bird. So the chemical energy that was stored inside the bird is going to be transferred to the cat. And the cat will use some of that energy within its system. But is there any dissipated energy in the system? Well, definitely. Every time the organisms are moving, for example, they are producing heat. And that heat energy is dissipated or spread out into the environment and it's lost to that system. It's wasted. It cannot be passed on to a nice useful form of chemical potential energy because it's wasted from the system. All right. I'm sure you could do that energy transfer diagram yourself. So if you could do that one, here's another one for you to try. This is a different kind of energy transfer system. I want you to be able to identify it. I want you to be able to talk to me about dissipated or wasted energy. I want you to talk to me about the transfers of energy within the system. And then I want you to predict any changes in the flow diagram if this electric doorbell alarm was substituted for the light. So we took out the light and we put in an alarm. And the alarm works with this little handle banging against the bell and making a sound. So shall we start? What kind of system is this? We know that it's going to be a kind of system where particles are going to move along a wire. This is an example of an electrical system. Let's start. What is our source of energy within the system? Where does the energy come from to start this system working? Did you name it? Were you able to say that the battery is our original source of energy? What kind of energy is in that battery? We know that it is also a chemical, and so it is chemical potential energy. So while the battery is just sitting in the system, it is doing nothing. But inside it, it has stored chemical potential energy. 
As soon as we switch on the circuit, we're going to see that the chemical energy is converted into kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy is made up of particles that are moving along the wires. That electrical, let's call it what it is, it's electrical energy, is transferred to the light bulb. And we're now going to see light. So we're going to actually see the output from this particular electrical circuit or this particular energy transfer system. We're going to see evidence of it in the form of light energy. Now, let's predict. Will we still see light energy if we substitute the light bulb for an electric alarm bell? Well, are we going to see this bell starting to glow and provide us with light? No, we won't. Instead, we're going to have it, this electrical energy being transferred and we're going to see kinetic energy in the form of this little arm vibrating backwards and forwards against the bell to create sound energy. So we can see that electrical energy doesn't only have to go towards providing us with thermal energy or heat energy. It doesn't only have to go towards providing us with light energy. We can get sound energy from an electric circuit as well. Dissipated energy, any wasted energy. Well, when we had our original light bulb system, if you touched the light bulb, you would feel that it was very hot and it burnt your finger. So something that I don't suggest you do, but even if you hold your hand close to the light bulb, you will feel the heat being radiated. So you can see that there is light energy, but there is also dissipated heat energy. I want you to try this one. This is a very simple one. Let's work. What kind of system is this? Look at the fire so we know that this is a thermal system. I hope you were shouting that out to me. What is the first store of potential energy? Where's the potential energy in this diagram? The potential energy is the wood. And we could classify it as chemical potential energy. That potential energy is passed on. There is the transfer to the bucket or to the pot that is hanging over the fire. And the bucket transfers the heat energy or the thermal energy to the water. And the water then begins to boil. So the water then boils and the dissipated energy is also going to be heat because the sides of the bucket will be hot and some of our energy will escape in the form of heat, both from the fire, the, the fuel burning, as well as from the water boiling. So here's your final challenge. We've got a couple of systems here. We've got a biological system with this food chain. I want you to identify all the parts and then we go from a biological system to a mechanical system where we can see that our horse that has received its energy transferred from its chemical potential energy in terms of its food and now the horse is able to exert a force on the cart and it's able to move the cart forward, which means that this is a biological system and this is a mechanical system coming together. And the horse is going to get tired and it's going to sweat and produce heat. The wheels are going to move. We're going to see at the axles. They get hot. Heat will be wasted or dissipated. But here we see a colliding of two systems, a mechanical system and a biological system, in order to see a whole range of energy transfers. I hope you were able to identify the energy transfers. 
to identify the kinds of energy and to see how heat is lost from many systems and is what we call wasted energy. That's it for today. Bye. Thank you.